Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to Clutch Gaming. Today I have a video set up for you guys on how to use NHSE for Animal Crossing. It's just going to be a basic tutorial on all of the fundamentals, especially if you're just getting into um, editing your save islands and you kind of don't know where to go. There's too many tabs, don't know what count or flag means, etc. So what you want to do is you want to open up NHSE. You can open up the save file that you want. When you open up the save file, you're going to get this little box. Now this box has a bunch of tabs on it, right? You're going to have the main one, which is your player tab, your villagers tab, and your map tab. So under the players tab, you can cycle through your different villagers. Um, you could change the player name, the town name. I haven't really changed the player name, but you can change the town name. I think it kind of cuts you off at 10 characters. Um, otherwise the game kind of like abbreviates your island for you. You could change your wallet. You could change how many bank bells you have in the bank. Um, so if you want to be a billionaire, you can go ahead and give yourself 999 million. Um, how many nook miles you have, how many uh, earned nook miles that you got. This tab right here shows you how much storage space you got and how many pockets you have on your character. So this is 40. Um, obviously changing this will not guarantee that you have 40 pockets if you're starting off with a new character, but we'll go more in depth in that in another video. Over here you have an edit items tab. This is basically um, editing the items that are directly in your pocket. Um, I have a bunch of trees in here, but sadly trees got patched out, so they are kind of useless now. Uh, let's look at the villagers tab. We got a villager index here, and you could basically cycle through all of the villagers that you have on your island here. I will teach you guys how to load in and move out villagers in a separate video, so stay tuned for that. And then we also have the map tab here. You can edit your turnip exchange prices here um, for whatever day, whatever time. You can do that all there. Your recycle bin, if you really want to edit it, you don't really have to. Um, your patterns, your custom designs are all here. You can dump them or you can load up a new one, which is really cool. Same thing with the pro designs, your flag designs here, your tailor design. Um, you could change the hemi that you're located in. And you could change your airport color. Not really sure what Weather Seed does just yet. And there's also an option for editing your player houses. You could pick which um, character house that you want. It shows the level of the house there. Um, you could change the level of the house manually up here as well. You can um, cycle through the different rooms. You could remove the items. Um, you can customize the rooms whichever way you want using the uh, item editor right here. Now what most people want to do is when they load up the save editor is they want to flatten their map. You want to go to edit map, you want to go to edit field items. Now this will show you your whole entire island. Um, you may have an island preloaded already or you may be starting off completely new. Either way, you want to remove everything on the map. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure you're on the items tab. Under tile editor mode, you want to make sure you're under the items. Um, you have items selected. Now, a couple of ways you can do this. If, let's say you want to remove some items. If you just click remove items, and you can you have options here: weeds, trees, plants, etc. But if you want to remove everything, you can just click on all and then you click yes. But it didn't remove everything for the map. It only removed everything that was selected in this box right here. But what I want is I want to remove every single item on my map. So there's a key here. You hold down the shift button and you don't let go of it. You, while holding it down, you click on remove items. You click on all, click yes. And now you can see that every single item has been removed from the map. But it doesn't stop there. Some of you may have a layer uh, items stuck on layer two. So you can just go ahead and click layer two. I have a couple of items here. Do the same thing, shift, all, remove all. Okay. 
so you can bring layer two back down to layer one. Now we want to get make sure that our island is completely flat. You want to cycle over to the terrain tab. Make sure tile editor mode is on terrain. And what you want to do is make sure that everything is on base here. You want to click on modify all, zero elevation, click yes. Now click modify all again. Set all tiles using the tile from the editor. Basically it's just going to make everything base tile. So you click that, click yes. Um, if you don't, uh, if you click yes and you skip the beach, um, you're still going to have cliffs on the outer edges. So I would just click no, so it does everything. And now you have a completely flat map. That's how you can easily flatten out your map in a matter of seconds. Now, the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is about these buildings that you got that you have left over on your map. All of these yellow squares are uh, yellow squares are some sort of building, bridges, or incline, or villager houses. Uh, let's say you want to get rid of the villager houses completely. All you have to do is go to the building type. You just switch that to zero. Once you switch it to zero, <coughs> and you switch out of it, you can see that it turned into none, and the box will show as none. So you could cycle over to a different one. You can do the same thing. Make that zero, make villager two homeless, sure, villager three, homeless, villager five, homeless, four, homeless. There you go. Now, this, it, they won't show up here on this big map, but when you cycle over it here, it's still going to show up as yellow, but it's just going to say none, meaning that the game, when you load up the game, it the building's not going to be there, so don't worry about that. Now, let's say you just want to move a house somewhere else. So let's say my player house is right here. I just want to relocate. You can use the X and Y right here, and you basically can move your house wherever you want on the map. If you go too far, you'll be out in the ocean. You don't want to go that far. So let's bring the house close to the airport as possible because I'm sure a lot of you guys just want to load up the game and head straight to the airport and get people into your island, right? There we go. Now for resident services, you can do the same thing. X and Y axis, you can move the resident center wherever you want, but you should notice that the plaza doesn't move with it. So if you want to move the plaza, the options are right here on the top, X and Y. Basically, you can move the plaza that way. Let's say you want to move the plaza to your house. You can you can do that. There you go. Now you really own the island. It's pretty cool. So that's how you do that. With the bridges, the bridges should show up here as well. So you can always just change the building type to zero and all of those would disappear on your map. All right? That's how you get rid of inclines, bridges, and make sure that um, you get rid of your houses and how you move the different houses around. Um, the next thing that a lot of people want to know is the main thing. How do I spawn in items? So make sure you go to the items tab. You click on items here in the tile editor mode. Make sure you're on layer one if you're not. Um, let's say you want to spawn in some Nook Mile tickets. Go ahead and type in Nook Mile tickets. And basically Nook Mile tickets stack in count of 10. So basically you want to change the count here to nine. So basically that's going to make sure that you have 10 Nook Mile tickets that are spawned in. I usually change the flag to 20 for a dropped item. I just do this out of habit. I don't think you really need to do this when it comes to materials or Nook Mile tickets, but I do it anywhere. anyway. So you can go ahead, you can right click on a tile, you can click set, and that's your Nook Mile ticket. Takes up one square. Now, if you want to place multiple instead of uh, instead of right clicking each time, you could hold down the shift key and left click, and this is a lot faster. 
but let's say you want to fill up your whole island or this whole square for example you could bulk spawn the mob tickets what you want to do is you want to click remove items spawn you could change the count here to 256 which is how many boxes there are in the square there you go and you got 2560 nook mall tickets spawned in in stacks of 10. easy you can do the same thing on the next tile over spawn 256. if you want it to become perfect squares each time you just got to do square root so let's say you want a smaller stack 81 9 by 9 right there that's how you do that let's clear that out all right now um, another thing that people kind of want to know about is DIYs. So if you want to spawn in an actual DIY recipe, make sure you type in DIY and you click on DIY recipe. This is going to drop down a second drop down menu for you, listing all the DIYs available in the game. You can just click on it. It doesn't have to be flag 20, it could be zero if you want. Um, out of habit, I just always keep 20 as um, the flag for dropped items. So let's say furniture for example, a cute bed. So if you want to pick a certain color for the bed, it kind of tells you right here. Um, this is the number that you're going to put in the count section. If you want a red cute bed, make sure you change the count to three. And if you have the flag set at zero and you set it, this is the display. This is the actual cute bed placed on your island. But let's say you just want it as a dropped item. You change the flag to 20, and then you do the same thing. And now it's the leaf version of the item. That's how you have a dropped item on your island instead of a placed one. Now, since we're here already, another question is how do I make camo items? Now, camo items can only be made if you have two to seven um, color variations of an item. If it has eight, it cannot be camo. If it has one, it cannot be camo. So what you want to do is this cute bed has one, two, three, four, five color options. I usually just make the count to seven. Makes my life easier. Um, once I spawn this in, this is automatically going to become a camo item. Robot Hero, for example. It has a color variant for count seven, so it's not going to become camo. So just something to take note of. Um, pretty sure the Rattan set also has six color variations here. So if you put the count as seven, it's going to spawn in a camo Rattan armchair. Easy. Now, since we're here, some people ask, how do I wrap? an item as a gift. Easy. There's a button right here called wrap. Click on that. You can wrap it in wrapping paper. You can make it into a present. If you do wrapping paper, a second box comes down and you can basically pick the color, which is really good because you can kind of organize the items that you have. Once you click the color, you can go ahead and place it on your map. So when you boot up the island, you will see the item uh, the armchair wrapped up in a navy wrapping paper. Easy. I'm gonna click remove items all. <coughs> Everything is removed from the map now. Um, the last and final thing I kind of want to show you is how to place fences on the map. So this is a little different. Your, let's see. Your, let's say you want to put down say you want to put down imperial fences. If you type in imperial fence, you're going to get the dropped version only. So let's say you want to stack this, fences stack to 50, so you're going to change your count to 49. Um, like I said, I always change the flag to 20 out of habit, and you can place them. So let's say if you didn't change the flag to 20 and you just make it zero, this is not gonna build fences on your island. This is still gonna drop um, the dropped version of the Imperial Fence. So 
I don't know if it's changed as of late, but I'm pretty sure that it still does that. Now, if you want to actually build fences on your island, you want to type in fence first and a lot of these options pop up. You kind of want to experiment with them to figure out which one is which. Um, let's see, the, uh, let's say this one, you can go ahead and I normally just change flag zero and I change this to flag one. The count, I usually just keep it at zero and you can go ahead and start making some hedges. Go up and down. And this is how you place hedges on the map. You could change the type of fence that you want. Now there are different fences in the game that aren't available to normal players, like the mermaid fence. Now you see how it turns into an apple here. So as a modder, you can place the fence down and you can actually see it on your island. But if you go and try to pick it up and put it in your inventory, it is automatically going to turn into an apple, which is why the mermaid fence is not distributable. Um, same goes with the fence June Bridge. June Bridge 1 and 3. These are different variants of the wedding fences. They come in purple and green, I believe. Same thing applies to them as the um, as the as the uh, mermaid fence. You can't really use them except for designing your island, and you can't give it out to people. So that basically covers the stuff that I wanted to show you guys. Um, if I click cancel, I go back to players, and I go to edit items. Um, you basically can do the same thing on, let's say you want to put stuff into your pockets, same concept, you can type in 9 and you could just spawn them into your pockets, easy. There you go. Same thing with items, cute, cute bed, like that. You could change everything here just like as you saw it on the map. Change it to red, put it right there. If you want a couple of blue ones, change the count. Easy. If you want materials, let's say gold nuggets. They stack in 30, change that to 29. There you go. Um, let's say I wanted to wrap this uh, key bed, this particular one. Right click, click view, click on wrap. And that's it, it's wrapped. If I click this, it's not wrapped. If I click this, oh. I guess I would need to delete it. Then I would need to wrap it. And then I could set it. And now you see a new number right down there. If you click new here, it's not wrapped. If you click new here, you could see this item is wrapped. And same thing, make sure you click save. Um, I didn't save when I left the map, so I'm pretty sure it's just going to be back to how it was. Yep. So whenever you're done editing your island, make sure you click save, because if you just click cancel, all that hard work is gone. So make sure you always click save when you uh, leave the map. Uh, and finally, when you are done editing everything, you want to make sure you click file save. You want to make sure the confirmation box comes up. Now. That is all I'm going to show in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you guys found it helpful. If you guys did, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, I will definitely have a part two, possibly part three, on how to use that uh, save editor. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.